Hall de Estudio. Pues ahí es. Stand by, here we go. Welcome to the Arts and Antique Radio Show, where your host, nationally recognized certified appraiser Elizabeth Stewart, Santa Barbara's treasure sleuth, will help you put a value on the treasures in your own home. Every time it rains, it rains pennies from heaven. Don't you know each cloud contains pennies from heaven? So let's find out. In three, How valuable two, is it? One, you are live. Hello, 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 Santa Barbara. It's your Chantress of Everything Valuable and Beautiful, Elizabeth Stewart. And, you know, I have a great friend on the air today, Alejandra Foligero, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about her project, but I just have to introduce her first. Alejandra was born in Argentina, and she's in Santa Barbara now. She's a promoter and organizer of Argentine Tango. And, you know, this has been a project since before the pandemic that Ali has been involved in and spearheading, and it has grown and it is so interesting how the trajectory has happened. And she has brought to Santa Barbara, the tiny little place, Santa Barbara, she brought the stars of the Argentine tango world. And today we're going to talk to two of those stars along with Ali. And I have to just say, uh, I'm so impressed with what Ali brings to us. And I'm just doubly impressed because I had the whole uh, evening last night looking at these gorgeous dancers. I have Miriam Larici and Leonardo Barrio Nuevo with us, and they are international stars. And uh, just to tell you a little bit, it's Fox and BBC, so you think you can dance. They've been the tango choreographers there since uh, 2009. NBC Superstars of Dance Champions, 2009. ABC's Dancing with the Stars choreographers, uh, from 2011 to 2023, NBC, America's Got Talent, guest performers, Univision, Latin, Latin Grammy Awards, guest performers, stars at Chase Bank's uh, TV commercial in for two years, uh, co-stars at ABC's TV series, The Catch, Broadway hit Forever Tango Stars, wow, Tony Award for Best Choreography, uh, Miriam's Tony Award. Um, amazing. And Miriam is the iconic image of the Broadway and London hit Forever Tango. She's also danced in a lot of musicals. She's been in um, 42nd Street, Me and My Gal, Mambo Kings, etc. Leonardo was featured in the stage production Forever Tango. And they both have performed tango all over the world They've opened a studio, which they sold recently in the L.A. area. So they actually are here in the States for part of their performing life. Um, they are in countless, countless tango festivals all over the world. I was looking at the, the list and I just thought, well, I can't list them all. Mm -hmm. But I can only say that they are major stars of the tango world. Um, just a little bit about Ale. Ale has don't I guess dedicated herself to bringing Tango to Santa Barbara and she designs and promotes many many wonderful things like a Monday practice night um milongas which are like get-togethers where people dance and anybody can dance if you look at the website you'll see all ages you'll see all capabilities uh, I remember Ali had a, an operation on her foot not too long ago and she was out there dancing <laughs> you know, she has brought to us some scholars of the dance. Pablo Aslan, for example. I had the great good fortune to interview him a number of times, who brought an archive uh, of tango material to UCSB and is a major scholar, the scholar of historic tango. Um, you know, amazing people she's brought to us. And she has, oh gosh, uh, uh, Fernando Guia has been on the show. Winnie Chung's been on the show. Um, I think there's been some really yeah. eye-opening things that I've experienced with Ali's uh, Nomad Tango, for example. I didn't know that Tango had like a gritty new age 
uh, kind of punky thing going on <laughs> on top of the classics. And she brought me a, a group. Was it? Was it? Cachivache, um, cachivache. Yes, cachivache. They brought me this group, and they were so hip. <laughs> it blew me away. <laughs> I always thought, you know, tango is like you've got the suit on and you the the, the gorgeous dress and this sort. Of, no, they were gritty and interesting and uh, hard oh, and yeah, the, just really interesting. Um, Ali is a mathematician. She has her PhD in math, and she's actually uh, a consultant, financial consultant. Um, but she believes in getting people together and dancing. I mean, that's the bottom line. <laughs> she really believes in that, and she's brought all of that to Santa Barbara. And I have the great opportunity of talking with these two wonderful stars today, Miriam and Leonardo, because of Ali. And I just want to say that we have this event that's coming up Friday, March 15th in La Cumbre Plaza. And to help us talk about this, Mike Cregan is here, who is the mastermind behind the Spaces for Art uh, in La Cumbre Plaza. And he's sponsoring the, the event. Also, Ali it mentioned to me, why don't we just do a little preview? Because April 18th, Noches de Tango at Buena Ona, Onda, it is coming to us some wonderful musicians. Um, we have Los Tangueros del Osta, and we have Charles Gorsinski Tango Quartet is coming. And Ali suggested that perhaps I do a little bit of music in and out of our segment today with these two groups. And uh, here again, Ali, I was binging on... Um, <laughs> Sasha's movie. Sasha, yes. Yeah, Sasha's movie. He did this amazing movie. And it's, I guess, a dream sequence. Just just real quickly, because I just have to tell you guys. It's a dream sequence. Two uh, young people are passing uh, on the street. And all of a sudden, the camera changes to tango on piers and in parks and on hillsides. And Sasha has composed this whole score for this film where it's just, you know, it's so beautiful. And then at the end, you see them just passing by. It was all a dream, you see. And uh, such, such a music, amazing, amazing little movie. And anyway, so they're coming on April 18th. So we're going to hear a little bit of music in and out um, of the sequence. Now, first of all, I want... Mike, to talk a little bit about the event. And Mike, thank you for being here. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, as as I know that you're familiar with, Elizabeth, is that we originally, or I originally intended that um, the art spaces at uh, La Cumber um, were going to begin setting up La Cumber Plaza as an art center. And it, it is now actually people are referring to it as an art zone. And we wanted to incorporate not just painting and sculpture and those sorts of things, but also uh, dance and um, drama and music and other um, aspects of that. We've had Santa Barbara Opera there. Um, and in this particular event that we're going to have, it's really, next Friday, it's really going to be special. Um, we're going to have one of the members of the music group, The Platters, is going to be there um, performing. And as you may may or may not remember, The Platters, big group from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. They did The Great Pretender, Smoke Gets in Your Eyes, Only You, many, many big hits. And so this gentleman, Ron, is going to be there. And is going, he's, a, he's actually a very good friend of one of our artists. And so he is going to come and perform um, at the beginning of the night. And then we're going to have State Street Ballet is going to be uh, doing a performance. And similar to what they did in November, they're going to be actually painting a painting with their feet as they are dancing. And um, people loved it uh, in November. And the good thing this time is there won't be rain like there was in November. <laughs> so that's good. 
And then to top the show off, not the show, it's not a show, but to top the evening off is going to be Nomad Tango and um, Miriam and uh, Leonardo. Yeah. And it's I know that in January, when they were there, people absolutely loved it. And I'm looking forward to, again, in January, it was raining. So this time with no rain, I'm sure it's it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Because it was great, even though there was rain and people just, I, I was uh, unbelievable how much people loved it last time. So it's going to be uh, an amazing evening with great singing, ballet dancing, and tango dancing. Uh, it's, I think it's going to be something people have never seen before at an art event here in town. So, you know, so I have a background in ballet, Mike, how do you do that? Because, I mean, we were not allowed to dance on concrete. I know that. So, I mean, do you put down a floor for the ballet? We put down a floor and we put down a canvas and then they have, um, uh, paint um not pots but sort of like that that they dip their feet in their shoes in and they get out there and they just make a painting and it's just really amazing actually just um the combination of the two is is really quite something and, the and are they dance are well. they dancing are, are they dancing a classical ballet yes 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 Amazing. I'm trying to think of the painting that G Giselle, for example. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I can't I can't hardly imagine what that painting would look like. How interesting. Well, this we're talking about the evening, and I just want to make sure that everybody hears this is on March 15th, so it's coming up real soon. And yes. it's at Lucumbra Plaza. It's in the evening. When do you start, Mike? Okay, it starts at five o'clock and goes to eight o'clock. The music performance will start probably around 515 or so. And um, that's next Friday. So you have to come and join us. Um, Richard's giving us a sign we got to go to quick break. I have some questions for Miriam and Leonardo. The first question I have, and I wonder if we could talk about that when we get back from the break. Um, so you so you think you can dance choreographer. So you're choreographing for the show. What does that entail? And the, that's that's one question I have. And then because you taught and because you are on these shows, um, for example, superstars dancing with the stars, so you think you can dance, etc. I want to know in your world, in the world of tango, how do you recognize artistry how do you recognize talent because you're right there on the forefront so how do you recognize that gentleman or that woman has a tremendous capability even though maybe the training isn't there how do you recognize talent is the question for you Richard let's go to quick break I want to talk a little bit about the method of choreographing for tango and then I want to talk about these wonderful stars of the genre, how they recognize t talent in fellow dancers and also novices, amateurs, how you recognize talent. Don't turn that down, back in a minute. Okay, and you are clear. Siempre me apoyó además, todo el tiempo, desde que sí, empecé. Desde sí. la primera vez que trajimos a Winnie y a Hugo. Qué bien, qué, qué inteligente que es, me gustó mucho su <risa> approach, sí. sí. Sí, no es superficial, es súper... You know what, what show I really enjoyed, and I actually, Ali, I got in touch with him after the show, um, the, the gentleman that played the harmonica for us. Oh, yeah. Joe Powers. Yeah, Joe Powers. so Joe Powers. And so um, Joe, uh, let's see, it, uh, instead of the Bandonian, how do you say it? Bandonian. Band Band yeah, instead of, of the Bandonian. Band so of onions. Band onion. <laughs> 
he would play the the harmonica sort of mimicking that that sound and he was so talented mm -hmm. i couldn't believe my ears mm -hmm. and um so shortly thereafter so miriam and leonardo i um i'm an appraiser of art and so shortly thereafter with our we have you know tremendous fires here in this area and yes. we had a fire um uh in the and, and and so I was hired by the um, by the law firm to estimate the value of a tremendous collection of harmonicas. Wow! No, that, that yeah, were destroyed. That, I thought it yeah. was just a one harmonica. I didn't realize that it was a collection. No, it was a whole collection. Not only was it a collection, but the gentleman who lost the collection was um, and Joe knew all about this he would custom make a harmonica to a custom sound or a custom scale. Wow. And so we had a whole workshop and he did harmonicas for, you know, Bob Dylan, uh, all these famous people. He was a, quite the craftsman and he had this amazing workshop. And I, I was thinking, who do I call? I'm not an expert in this. And I remembered you brought me Joe. And so I got in touch with Joe and I said, Joe, I'll pay you to help me, you know, come to the conclusion of value for the collection. And uh, so Joe, okay, go All ahead. Right. Go ahead, Richard. Three, two, one, you are live. Welcome back. It's Elizabeth Stewart and I'm talking with two of the major stars of the tango world. Uh, Ale has brought me Miriam Larici and Leonardo Barrio Nuevo, he will, they will both be performing on March 15th at La Cumbra Center for the Arts, which is in the La Cumbra section of the mall there that Mike Cregan has kind of custom designed for the arts. And Mike was telling us that the evening is going to consist of song by a member of the older group, the Platters, you remember them? And also State Street Ballet is going to do something I've never heard of in all my years. They're going to be dancing a painting. With their feet, they'll be painting a canvas as they dance a classical ballet. Uh, George Balanchine would never have seen it in his entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. B would be freaking out. And it'll be very interesting. And then we have Miriam and Leonardo coming to dance for us. Um, and uh, my question for both of them before we went to break, number one, I would like to know how, how both of them, because both of them have choreographed, how you choreograph for a show, for example, like so you think you can dance and dancing with the stars. Can we start with Miriam? How do you choreograph for such a show? Well, we have very few hours. We have only four days to do the full routine. They are mainly not tango dancers. They know all kind of uh, dance like ballet, jazz, contemporary, but they don't know tango. So we have to make them look like experienced tango dancers in few hours. So mostly we get the routine in advance. We choreograph here in the house ourselves. When we get there to the dance floor, we already know what we want from them very much. So in two hours, we give them the steps first, technique, basic technique for tango, which is really hard for them. They are very amazing and very talented, but when they get together and they try to create one upper body and four legs coordinated, uh, that's a main challenge that they have to, to get together and dance as one, because they are very used to do it by themselves. So after a few hours, they know the te technically they know the step, but then we go to the second level, which is the emotion, to give them the passion, the feeling, to make them look like they've been dancing for a long time, and this is a romance moment, moving dancing. Um, we have three days. The day number four is already the show, so we are downstairs on the on the stage with lightings, cameras, and then the, at night is a competition. So in very few hours, really very, very few hours, they have to master. master. They have to absorb not only the, uh, the technique for tango, but the emotion and the connection, the chemistry between both of them. 
So what you said was really interesting, and I'd like to hear more about that. So it's four feet, four legs, and one body up uh, above the waist. So, so can you explain that a little more, Miriam? Yes, in tango, the most important is the embrace. You could do same simple steps. You could walk. You could do more complicated figures, jumps, but you have to go back to the simple feeling of the embrace. So we really get importance in tango to get a uh, one upper body. So we are together hugging, hugging, and then coordinating the move. So it's like you put your heart together with your partner, you create one big heart, and from there we move out. We move the arms and we move the legs, feeling each other, getting into one bubble together, and the emotion that you get from the music transport to your rest of the body. Leonardo, do you... Uh, I see you're shaking your head. Yes, you agree. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's that's that is very interesting. I mean, important what Miriam says is the emotion also comes from the music. The music, depending on the orchestra, the type of, of musicians that was was playing, and it brings different emotions, right? So the steps that you will have is like first it starts with the music, then goes through the heart, and then goes to the legs. So it's not that something you try to mimic or it, if first you have to feel it. And that's the most important thing in Argentine tango and the hardest. Once you feel it and everything flows because the music moves you, somehow moves you. So that's the most important thing, feeling the, the, the motion of the tango. So can I ask you, uh... How do you so so now this is another question, and then I want to get to the um, talent part of our question. But so when you two started to dance together, how did you know that the synergy was going to happen? Normally, mm -hmm. I mean, we knew each other, and I knew her. She was a big star. She is a big star, um, um, from different shows and um, also she saw the show when I was here in Forever Tango. So we knew each other, not in person, but we knew how the style of dancing was. Um, so we, you kind of tell that you, if you're going to match or not. But it was very funny because we were here ready to work. And then we, she had all the plans. She hired me to work with her. I was in Argentina. Uh, she contacted me first and um, mm -hmm. come to work with with her and um it was very funny because we were about to rehearse and we said oh we have all this plan of work like festival workshops shows TV coming shows. tv shows coming up and uh we didn't even embrace for the first time so we said okay let's connect let's start dancing and we felt right away you know the, the chemistry. chemistry we felt the chemistry we right felt away. not only technique but Tagging together and walking together, we felt, okay, this is going to work. We have chemistry. Yeah, definitely. That's amazing. That's that's quite amazing. So you were already working and you hadn't really danced together at all. So you already were laying out the plans and the the the, the engine was ru running, put it that way. The engine was running and exactly. you had no idea that this was going to come together like Miriam was saying to create that one bubble, that one heart together, and boom, it 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 happened very quickly. Do you, do you remember what you were dancing to when you realized that? Actually, we started... Um, we were improvising. We, were we improvising. put some songs, uh, random songs, and then we were improvising, not even a uh, routine. Then the first routine, it was Oblivion. Oblivion. Oblivion is a kind of classic tango, uh, more for stage. Very romantic. Very romantic and very slow. So it, it requires more control of your body. And then I felt, oh, wow, he's so strong. He mm -hmm. does a very nice hug. He's content. He's like protecting me when I dance. I felt protection. I felt safe. I felt like I can relax, express. I felt it was no competition between our bodies or our energies. It was accumulative energy we were creating a larger energy 
I understand that it, it's it's clear when I was watching some of the performances that you did on YouTube, it's very clear. It's very clear. Uh, so, Richard, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to go to quick break. And then I want to hear Miriam and Leonardo's take on how they recognize talent. That I'm really interested in. I had, um, you know, my world is more the visual arts now. And I had this, I put this question to a, a, a very well-known professor of art who also is a painter here in Santa Barbara. I said, you know, you teach, you teach oil painting. Uh, uh, Michael, how do you recognize with your students? He's been teaching 45 years. How do you recognize talent? And of course, he's a painter. And uh, Richard will remember this. This is a famous quote that I've used so many times, but I heard it first with Michael. He said, I recognize talent in an artist right before they start to paint the, this is a, a metaphor, right before they start to paint the brown potato in the sky. What that means is when you are painting, you can overpaint and the oil paint mixes together and turns brown. And so his metaphor meant he can recognize talent because it knows when to stop. It knows when to stop. And uh, so it's very interesting. I thought that's a bit. But now I want to, when we go to quick break after that, I want to hear what Miriam and Leonardo, what they look for in a, in, in a tale, in talent. Okay, Richard, let's go to quick break. Okay, you are clear. That's good I, I had to give because, up the uh, <clears throat> I had to give up the forbidden yeah. dance for Lent. So oh, yeah. you know, I I can't I can't. <laughs> this is really pushing the envelope for me, Elizabeth. <laughs> See, and I and I agree with uh, what that um, instructor said because I know exactly when to stop dancing, which is <laughs> before I start. <laughs> You've never tried tango. That's why. <laughs> my wife is always trying to get me to dance to go dancing and i'm it's 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 not my thing you never you know, know. there's you something try? it's just the, the, the this culture is just i mean especially so so you know i had years in ballet and then when, when my son uh he's he's also built like me he's narrow and tall and and his, his feet are very good. And I thought, okay, let's uh, put him in in ballet. And he was, I think, five. And I enrolled him in the in a studio. And you know, he's thirty five now. He um, at the time it was still like a, a a thing that boys didn't dance that way. You know, thirty five years ago, thirty years ago, boys did not. Boys did other things and he was embarrassed. And I thought, okay, but I know he's got the body for it. So what do I do? Well, I put him in um, fencing because the positions are very similar. Mm -hmm. you, you, in mm -hmm. fact, you use the same basic positions in, in ballet. So I put him in fencing and lo and behold, he went on to be one of the seven uh, com com uh, competitors in, in a, a certain style. It's called Sabre. Mm -hmm. uh, in the country and got a full scholarship to college oh, wow. because wow. of the, yeah. So, but sometimes I regret not putting my foot down and saying, you're going to stay in ballet because he, he could have been a beautiful dancer. I think. <laughs> my, my, I, I made my son do ballet from ages, probably something like that, five mm -hmm. to 17. Um, and he was a beautiful dancer, but same thing. It was really hard for him to, he, he wouldn't tell his friends, uh, you know, it was a, it was a, only because Rodney in State Street Ballet had um, a special class for boys taught by boy, by, by a man. Oh, oh, you, oh, he studied with Rodney. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That was really, that was the, why I managed, and, and I think to this day, his balance and his way of movement is because of those years. It's amazing. I, I just have one question. Which is cheaper, learning to dance or therapy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, Richard. <laughs> La 
uh, learning to dance is more fun <laughs> as a therapy. You should have seen my husband fought tooth and nail about dancing. And now I, I'm staying home and he's going dancing all the time. I mean, it took him a few years, two, three years. Richard, you never know, seriously. <laughs> And, and yeah. believe it or not, I will bet you if I go back far enough into my childhood, there were times when it wasn't an issue. I just moved with the music. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, uh, Richard, we'll have you at the next art walk uh, dancing. <laughs> you want to you wanna put a wager on that? Uh, put a wager on that one? <laughs> Hey, I, you know, I'll try something. I'll try anything once, sometimes twice. That's good. <clears throat> Although I'm not a real fan of cilantro, but, you know, I'll, uh, you know, <laughs> lean that Tastes way. Tastes like soap, I always say. <laughs> so, Ali, your organization is growing. I noticed that you have now a... Um, marketing expert and, uh, on the development staff? development i'm trying yeah. to to get you know as, as you know that's my my thing <laughs> the, I, where i'm weak is, is getting funds but i have so many it's so big the concept of it and i'm so proud of it that i really think it needs to be supported but i have another idea i will tell you off afterwards i'm really excited about there's so many okay yeah. we are uh we're going to be coming back here Mike, I want you to think of a question for Miriam and Leonardo as well. There are a couple of questions. You Here want me to think of a question? Three, two, one. You are live. Welcome back. It's Elizabeth Stewart, and I'm speaking with two superstars of the tango world. Ali is bringing to us and her nomad tango organization that's taken off with great, great steam. She's bringing us Miriam Larici and Leonardo Barrenuevo. And they're going to be dancing on March 15th at La Cumbre Plaza in the Arts uh, Center there. And also to help us with this interview, Mike Cragen, who's the founder of the arts organization IDEA at La Cumbre Plaza is here. And he's telling us that this is going to be March 15th is going to be quite the evening because he's having a singer from the older music group, The Platters. He's having State Street Ballet that's going to be dancing a painting. They're going to be painting as they dance with their feet. This I have to see. And then, of course, the um, the stars of the show, we have Miriam and Leonardo dancing their beautiful tango. Uh, and Mike is telling us that uh, it's quite the show because uh, it's he's laid down a floor. It starts early at 5 and on March 15th then goes till 8. So you have a treat in front of you coming up soon next Friday. Uh, I had a question for Miriam and Leonardo because they are teachers. They are uh, choreographers for years and years. And my question to them was, you have a student or you have an amateur, you have a novice, and you recognize talent. How do you recognize talent in tango? Miriam, let's start with you. In tango, as soon as a person walks, I can tell if they're going to be a good uh, mm -hmm. tango dancers or not. Mostly it's, um, through the personality. Um, for me, it's the simplicity that the person has inside without elaborating much to express and to tell me that it's going to be a good work or not. I can tell right away when they hug and they connect, I also can tell if they're going to be good for tango because the way they, they move together, one and the other. But mostly in any arts, we are uh, always agreeing like, yes. The other day we went to see a flamenco show and it was like three dancers and a singer and a guitar player. And we thought, okay, that is the best of them. That person is the best of the four of them. Is that one, that's the best. Somehow they were all good, but one is more like a highlight of a person. It's like shining. And right before the show, he, the show, he stood there 
and we were waiting for him for that person it was just the energy he didn't even dance but we were waiting for him because somehow we knew that that one was the one it's something on the personality on the aura on the energy that we connect right away and we can tell that that is a good one is the best one or it happened with our students also sometimes we have like 15 of them and maybe they are experiencing dance in any dance not in tango or not somebody without any experience but the way they walk and they start moving the first tango steps we can tell he's going to be a good dancer a good tango dancer i mean a good tango dancer there is something on the move something on the honestly of the expression and for me it's not when the person is not trying to elaborate too much to make it too complicated when they go simple and precise i can tell this is a good tango dancer how about you leonardo especially when you're you're you know that that you're looking at a support uh a male dancer supportive dancer how, how do you how do you envision I normally see it like, uh, for example, the movement, the way he moves, not uh, not the technique, the way he moves has to be organic. It has to flow. Like I was telling you, like um, the music come first, goes through the heart and then to the to the body. And that's the way that I see it. If you feel something, if it goes through the heart, it will flow and it will feel organic. Or if you put too much technique or this is the arm goes at this angle, the finger goes here, the line, it loses everything, all the essence, it loses the essence. So um, as soon as I normally said, when the, a couple embraces, it will embrace and they take a side step to start dancing, you can tell right away the way they connect, they breathe together, the way the leader will hold the follower, the, that energy that they create that you can tell right away that it'll work and it's or it's uh, natural. So uh, I have a question for you. How do you how do you let's see how do you know that you are ready for for the stage? In other words, uh, I, I I'm thinking of an interview I heard on NPR where they're interviewing a, an actor and the actor is saying, uh, I think it was Gary Oldman. I think he said something about I I I'm helped greatly by costume and makeup. When I am in character, uh then I'm I know that I'm getting myself very ready when I have the complete package of the costume and the makeup and the character pulled together. So what about you two? Uh, Leonardo, how do you know, okay, it's showtime now. How do you know? The butterflies in the, in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, you know, even if it's a very small show, even if there is very few people or there is a huge audience, I like having those butterflies, you know, in the, in the stomach. And I was telling her, you know, the day, if somebody loses, they will lose, sorry, somebody lose their butterflies on the stomach before the show, it's time to move on and do other things because that's the thing of dancing. One, the adrenaline, the emotion, everything coming together before the show, that's the beauty of it, of the show, because you can dance at a milonga socially and you don't feel those butterflies. Of course, you enjoy the music, you enjoy the connection and the friends, but for the show, that adrenaline is is something is very important as an artist. Yes. Miriam, you too. Yes, I approach the stage a little more of getting rid of my self and get the angel of dance channel through me. I try to get rid of my mental um, thoughts and just feel and let my body be used by a spirit of dance. So I don't have to, I have just to channel whatever is going to happen. I see, so, so you, what you're saying is that you, you, 
so I'm I'm a, li I'm a little confused in a way because you are you're saying you want you channel yourself in the moment, but how but how do you think yourself through that? How do you how do you mentally so how so you say I want to give myself up to the dance, but at the same time that's an effort mentally. How do you do that? Actually, the less I think when I'm dancing on the stage is the better situation. I try not to control the move by my mind, but let the moves happen through my body, like take over of the body. I know where to go. I know the musicality. We know the routine. But the less I'm thinking about it or anticipating the thought to the next move, it's, it's flowing better. So uh -huh. I actually do don't think and get into the character, uh, letting be and not controlling the moment. Just just opening myself, my body. Let the spirit of dance, we call it the spirit of dance, we call it angel of dance. Use our bodies, use my body to express and to inspire people. Do we have a mission? When we dance, we have a mission. It's, mm -hmm. it's just inspiring people, it's giving love, receive love from them, exchange of love, exchange of inspiration, creation. So you have to be open, like in any art, you have to be open to art. So yeah, not controlling from the mind, more heart and energy. Very interesting. Fantastic. Hey, Richard, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to go to quick break. And then I'd like for Mike to ask a couple of questions. He famously said during the break, when all great things are said, mm -hmm. that he does not dance. And so I hear that he's a not not a dancer. So I want to know he's the, the okay, okay, Richard, of course, is not a dancer either. But he's of the group here today. He is the non dancer. Uh, and I'd like to hear a question or two from Mike when we get back from the break for our great artists, Miriam and Leonardo. And the show is coming on March the 15th to La Cumbre Plaza to the Arts uh, Center there that Mike has established years ago. And it's flourishing now. There are, I guess, five or six separate locations for art now down at La Cumbre Plaza. About eight. About eight now. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. And this show is going to be super interesting because he's got a singer from the Platters. He's got the State Street Ballet coming to paint with their feet. And he's got these great stars of the tango world, Miriam Larici and Le Leonardo Barrio and the Wavo coming as well. Don't turn that down. Back in a minute. Okay, you are clear. And I'm surprised uh, that you didn't select as one of the songs Donna Summer's Let's dance. <laughs> no, 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 but Richard, you got you got my um. I think I sent you two emails with all sorts of music for the you break. You did. I, I've got them loaded in there. You'll hear them during the replays. Okay. Hey, Elizabeth, can I meet your dog? Uh, the dog is at the vet. John's got uh, your dog at the vet because he's got a, a, a something, an eye infection or something like that, which is great because. It's a little more peaceful, uh, <laughs> yeah. And last time, my gosh, it it's a new a new dog, new new. He's he's two years old, and my my old my old beautiful boy was sixteen or seventeen, and oh, the energy thing. level mm. is so different. The two year old yeah. is bing, 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 bing. <laughs> no. yeah. Holly has a great dog. Oh. I have three great dogs, but Mike met my, my newest and most uh, challenging baby. <laughs> they are. They're so, see, right now, the challenge is, you know, don't pee on the couch. <laughs> this is your name. <laughs> yeah. Good, and how to walk on a leash. How to walk on a leash. <laughs> yeah. They're babies. Yeah. I have this... Uh, Kind of uh, idea, Elizabeth. Remember, uh, remember when Pablo Aslan came, Max Masri came of Tangueto, right? Yeah. I'm in the board of rescue cats, and my 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 dogs are collies that come from Mitch Telson, which is a, a rescue person in town. 
he only gets the older dogs. He does, you know, eight, 10, you know, because he doesn't want the energy that you got right now. So he only gets eight, 10 year olds. Anyway, we I have this colleague that Mike uh, Craig and me. But um, we want to do uh, tango cats. We want to sample cats and do a tango. <laughs> and do oh, a like joint. That, that sounds uh, like fun. Do a, yeah, do a, a tango, uh, do a kind of fundraiser with the, both the cats and the and the tango. I can see that I can see that would actually work movement wise. You know, know. Um, yeah, right, medium, medium. Do, do we always be, you know, to be, I don't know, as a student of tango, they tell you. All right, like we are cat. coming back and you have eight minutes to the end of the program. Eight minutes. In three, two, one, you are live. Uh, welcome back. It's Elizabeth Stewart. And I'm um, speaking with uh, two wonderful internationally known tango artists, Miriam Larici and Leonardo Barrio Nuevo. They're coming to Santa Barbara to dance on March 15th at La Cumbra Center uh, for the Arts. It's in the mall there. And Mike Cregan, the founder of the space, spaces, because now there's eight spaces for the art, arts at, at, at the plaza. Fantastic. Um, and uh, we had some interesting comments from Miriam and Leonardo about how they recognize talent, what they look for. Miriam was saying, as a as a, a, a novice student walks, just how the student walks is indication of talent. Um, fantastic thought. Uh, Mike, have you any questions for the artists? Um, sure. Here's a question. Um, and that is in painting and sculpture, there is something that is um, in each piece that's being expressed, that is expressed. I mean, for example, if you see the Mona Lisa in person, you quickly discover that the image is not the thing that there is something intangible and emotional that's transmitted uh, very strongly uh, to you. And it's the thing I think that makes that a very unusual and amazing um, painting. What is it that tango um, expresses? It always depends on, um, on the interpreter, of course. Mm -hmm. And we as dancers, we try to listen to the music and feel the emotion that the music gives you and our best way with our with the full heart we try to translate that to the movement so it's not only a choreography for example i will put the example of my choreography and um, you can create a piece where you put all the emotions in in a oh, yeah. in order to tell a story but mm -hmm. also each emotion has to have their own emotion inside so each movement has to tell something. You you are telling a story in in a piece, right? So some mm -hmm. songs will not have a story. Will have different emotions flowing, 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 and that's the beauty of it. Depending on the song, you will choose as an artist. You will choose what to tell in a story or just a combination of emotions. Mm -hmm. I think mostly in tango, singing, dancing, or music um represents a lot a lot uh, life moments real life mm -hmm. like struggles fighting competition passion mm -hmm. um, <laughs> sometimes happy feelings and romance but a lot of drama if you mm -hmm. think songs uh, lyrics mm -hmm. it's a lot of drama uh, sadness tango was created by the immigrants from europe when they came to Argentina and they mixed with the locals and they were having a lot of sadness and missing their own country and their own culture and creating a new culture with the locals. So it's a lot of uh, sad feelings as mm -hmm. well as passion and love and romance, all mixed. Ah, very good. Now, when you chore choreograph something and you're working with some dancers, and you have an idea behind the choreography of what you're trying to accomplish, emotion or story-wise, is this something that you go through with the dancers or do you let them develop their own interpretation of it? Or how do you approach that? 
We normally, depending on the dancer, we said, okay, this couple, this dancer, is good for this type of emotion. For example, if somebody is like sad, we are not going to put the happy feeling at the at the song. So we try to first focus on the what they are good to do for, and um, and then we start the music scouting. So we start listening to songs, song, song until we find okay, this is the song for this person, not other song. So from there we start working and we feel the music. We try to connect with the person. And then we create a routine, all based in emotions and try to tell the story. So the, it's easier for the for the other dancer to interpret what we are trying to say. Because when you try to translate only emotions, it's hard because we have our own emotions, they have their own. So we try to put our emotions in movements. So with this movement, try to feel it this way, this way. So that way they understand the story and they translate to the emotion. Mm -hmm. How do you balance, make a balance between what the dancer wants to uh, express and what your original vision for the choreography wanted to express? Dancers are like, so they, yes. we hear the song, sometimes they, so we have the story, sometimes we have the song, and then we tell them, okay, in this act, you are this character. You have to represent this type of character. Here you are the the tough guy, mm -hmm. and you are the romantic women, and you are getting together. So you have to you have struggles. If we create the story and the situation, and they have to be acting and expressing. Sometimes they get that uh, feeling from their own real life, from the past, from the present. So they can put it on the on the dance and the moves. Is that not only moves, but each move is telling stories. Ali, mm -hmm. go ahead. I wanted to ask them because if, if if you talk about the intangible that you see when you watch tango, to me the most uh, moving part is how they say intimacy of the dancers. There's a that's what that that's what makes it tango in some way. You know, you're not by dancing a valse and talking. You're really it's a very intimate moment to dance a tango. And now you have a tango show with all this choreography. How, how do you manage to mix those two aspects of tango in, in a stage setting? Yeah, like Miriam was saying, if you create a, a bubble, correct? When you embrace, when you hack, that's the intangible uh, feeling because you create your own bubble and you don't... And there are two different worlds connection for the, the uh, social dancing and just for you and your partner and when you work with an audience sometimes when you work with an audience the hardest the hardest part is to we, what that's what we we try to do all, all the time we create a bubble but with it aiming towards the audience we don't let the audience like affect our own story we still feel mm -hmm. it very intimate but the moment that we process and we create a routine it's not just for us, it's intent to be shared with the audience. We are- I have to, just, I have to say that uh, we, we reached a time where we have to leave, but I want to just do another shout out. It's March 15th at La Cumbra Plaza at five. And that's when the show starts to come and see these beautiful performers. And I think it's free, isn't it, Mike? It's free? Yes, it is. Yeah, so it's free and come and, come and enjoy. Uh, the performance and thank you Miriam and Leonardo Ali thank you Mike thank you for being here and helping me out I appreciate it that is going to be a fantastic evening March 15th be there thank you for bye guys bye. oh yeah oh, bye you. you are clear thank you great thank program you guys thank you all I have another radio thing to do at the moment so uh, <laughs> I will see you all very soon thank you ciao princesas Nice. Great hearing everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Bye. Thank you always, Richard. They are keeping us straight. Thank you. Thank you. It was very fun. <laughs>